Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. I'm really excited to talk about action research in education with you today. Follow along with the video and please share your ideas and questions in the comment below. So let's start with the basics. What is action research? It's a way for teachers to solve problems or improve their practice by trying out new strategies, seeing how they work, and then tweaking them to get better results. Yes, it's called action research, a special way teachers can make their teaching even better. Think of it as a cycle of continuous improvement. Here's how the action research cycle works. 1. Planning identify a specific problem or area for improvement. Pinpoint an issue affecting student learning, classroom management, or instructional methods. Develop a detailed, actionable plan. Create a strategy to address the identified issue. This plan should outline clear goals and objectives, describe the interventions or instructional strategies you will use, specify when and how these will be implemented, and identify the resources and supports needed. 2. Acting. Follow the plan meticulously and consistently. Carry out your plan in the classroom. This may involve introducing new teaching methods, changing classroom routines, incorporating technology, or other instructional strategies. Make sure to follow the plan consistently to ensure the reliability of your observations. Engage students and colleagues. Ensure that students understand the changes being made and their purpose. Collaborate with other teachers or staff who might support the intervention. 3. Observing. Systematically collect relevant data. Gather data to evaluate the impact of the intervention. This could include student assessments, assignments, quizzes, attendance records, participation logs, and feedback from students. You might also conduct surveys or interviews to gain qualitative insights. Monitor the implementation process. Keep detailed notes on how the plan is being carried out, any adjustments made on the fly, and initial observations of student responses. 4. Reflecting. Analyze the collected data. Carefully review the data to assess the effectiveness of the intervention. Compare student performance and engagement before and after the intervention. Look for trends and patterns that indicate improvement or areas needing further attention. Assess the effectiveness of the plan. Determine what worked well and what didn't. Reflect on whether the intervention met the set goals and objectives and consider any unexpected outcomes. Identify successes and shortcomings. Highlight areas where students showed improvement and note strategies that were particularly effective. Also, identify any areas where the intervention did not achieve the desired results. Revise the plan based on insights gained. Use your reflections to modify and improve your strategy. This could involve tweaking your approach, trying different methods, or addressing unforeseen challenges. Prepare to implement these revisions in the next iteration of the action research cycle. There is always a question regarding the research methods used in action research. Is action research conducted using quantitative, qualitative, or mixed methods? Well, data collection in each phase can be quantitative, qualitative, or a mix of both methods depending on what you want to learn. Action research is known for its flexibility because it can incorporate different research methodologies depending on the nature of the problem being investigated and the goals of the research. This adaptability allows educators and researchers to use quantitative methods like surveys, tests or statistical analysis and qualitative methods such as interviews, observations or focus groups or a combination of both. This flexibility makes action research particularly useful in educational settings, where the outcomes can directly influence teaching practices and student learning. 
Let me give you a concrete example. Let's say we want to improve students' reading skills in our classroom. We'll use game-based learning as our intervention. First, in the planning phase, we notice that students are struggling with reading comprehension. We think that using educational games might make reading more fun and effective. During this phase, we collect baseline data on students' current reading levels through standardized reading tests. Next, in the action phase, we introduce some reading games into our weekly lessons. These games are designed to help students improve their reading skills while having fun. During this phase, we collect data on student participation and engagement by tracking how often and how long students are playing the games. Now, during the observation phase, we need to collect more detailed data to see if our plan is working. Here's how. Pre and post tests. We conduct tests to assess students' reading skills before and after they start playing the games. Surveys and feedback forms. We gather students' and teachers' opinions on the games and whether they think the games are helping. Classroom observations. We take notes on how engaged students are during the game-based learning activities. Student progress tracking. We use game analytics to monitor individual student progress over time. Once we've collected our data, we move to the reflection phase. This is where we analyze the data to see if our hypothesis was correct. Did students' reading skills improve? Were they more engaged? Did we run into any problems? For the reflection phase, we analyze test scores, compare pre- and post-test results to measure improvement in reading skills. Review feedback. Look at the survey responses to understand students' and teachers' perspectives. Evaluate observations. Discuss our notes on student engagement to identify any patterns or issues. Assess progress tracking. Review the analytics data from the games to see individual student improvements and identify any outliers. Reflection is all about looking at the results and deciding what changes we need to make. Maybe some games were more effective than others. Or perhaps we need to provide more support for certain students. Based on these insights, we refine our plan and start the cycle again, always aiming to improve. And that's the essence of action research in education. It's a powerful tool that helps us be proactive and responsive, making evidence-based changes to improve student learning. By continually cycling through planning, acting, observing, and reflecting, we can create a dynamic and effective learning environment. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you found this overview of action research helpful and inspiring. If you have any questions or thoughts, please leave them in the comments. Until next time, happy teaching and researching.